Next one is uh, Ishin no Kai, basically the Osaka first party, more or less, uh, the, the Japan Ishin no Kai. This is a kind of, it's a regional political party from Osaka that had a kind of, as a lot of these things are, they have a regional governor who's kind of charismatic and uh, has such great ideas for changing the world that, you know, they try to launch into a national party. And for some reason, there are people in Tokyo and other places that say that they want to vote for the party because of the guy. But, you know, then he was governor and mayor of Osaka for a while. Uh, turned out not to be perfect again as always happens with these sort of you know fad based uh, political parties so while they've remained um, you know in power in Osaka they've, their kind of national influence has definitely waned however they're still trying to be relevant and they just decided this week that they were going to support basic income uh, universal basic income uh, for, as part of their platform for the upcoming election uh, suggesting that they should pay uh, between uh, 600 what were the amount? Six, uh, 600 and well, so in Japanese yen, uh, 60,000 yen and 100,000 yen per month to um, everybody in the country as, as a special supplemental income to whatever else they're doing just to improve people's standard of living. Uh, in order to do this, uh, they would need to get. Uh, oh man, and Cho is uh, Cho, the numbers are so big, it, it'd be like a trillion yen or some, some number like that. They needed additional tax-based revenue from a government that already uh, overspends uh, more than it collects, uh, more than any other country in the developed world right now. So funding it would be hard. I, if you ask me, I mean, I find it an interesting idea. Um, so, you know, forget about trickle down, you know, what about bottom up? What, what if you're actually spreading, you know, improve consumption by spreading income from the bottom? How would it not be inflationary? There's questions I have. But you know what, Ishinokai, they control Osaka. You know, if Osakans think this is a good idea, um, increase local taxes, which I don't think they can do. I think they need the national government's permission to increase taxes. But if they can raise local taxes, you know, use use Osaka as a test bed and, and prove how good this is. I mean, that's the only good thing about being the Osaka first party. Um, they've got the power to actually do this. So I'm kind of curious. I, don't, I must admit, I've heard about experiments with universal basic income in Europe and some part, some small areas in America. Is it David Yang, uh, the presidential candidate, Democrat presidential candidate, was a big advocate of it? Yeah, I must admit. I mean, I I don't know enough about it to be really strongly for or against it, but I'm always interested in new ideas and to see if they work or not. And, you know, I'd like to see this one tested. Certainly, it is strange to me that there could be a situation in a country like America or Japan, you know, which has so much wealth that there could be people who you know struggle to pay for food for their kids or clothing for their kids um you know the idea that there should be a guaranteed minimum sort of standard of living is pretty reasonable actually in, in countries as wealthy as these when you consider the immense wealth that's in the society um uh, if that sounds socialist well you know but this is not necessarily a socialist idea this is just you know um it, it's not controlling where people work or what they do it's literally like a stipend that they get just to be able to look after their daily sort of and how, how is it different in a way to letting wealthy people uh get tax breaks on you know capital tax you know ca capital gains tax or what, whatever so um you know uh, you're just uh giving smaller chunks of money to more people so like I say, um, I'd be super interested actually if Osaka executed this. Uh, I get the feeling that because they're just put, making it as a national policy, um, that it's something they're just going to talk about but not do unless they get elected in the national government, which is never going to happen, which is a shame because they own Osaka, so they might as well do it. But uh, yeah, it's an interesting, I haven't really seen much uh, universal basic income debate really being taken seriously in Japan. The fact that they're a quasi-serious party, at least in some parts of the country, um, you know, it'll be interesting to see if they actually do anything about it. Yang Gang, indeed. Back into the comments, uh, one Johnson, basic income could enable people to get into employment, but could also uh, allow, enable some to remain hikikomori. Why do I think hikikomori is such a problem in Japan? I don't know. Um, look, the education system, of course, being extremely high pressure and just people dropping out from that I, I, out of depression and whatnot. Families just really um, let their kids stay at home indefinitely. Um, the, the idea of getting kicked out of the home at 18 just doesn't really exist in Japan. Um, I think it's just part of dropping out of the sort of pressure of society in general is my take on it. But there again, I mean, I'm not a psychologist. I don't know um, a lot about it. Also, the fact that people can survive fairly comfortably as hikikomori. I mean, you know, a lot of countries, you can't be a hikikomori because you'll starve to death. But in Japan, you know, you can survive pretty well and it's probably getting, um, you know, more and more.